you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations a rebroadcast of The Jack Benny Show with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Jack Benny's special guest singer, and Don Wilson. gentlemen, as you all know, radio is one of the world's greatest mediums of entertainment. All week long, you are entertained by your radio. On Monday, you hear... The Cavalcade of America. On Tuesday... It's Bob Hope. Wednesday... Eddie Cantor. On Thursday... You hear Bing Crosby. Friday... Amos and Andy. On Saturday... It's Truth or Consequences. And on Sunday, you wait for none other than... Jack Benny. Who? On Sunday, you listen to Jack Benny. Look, fat boy, this is a free country. (laughs) When Sunday comes around, you listen to what you like, and I'll listen to what I like. Oh, yeah! (laughs) Well, have you had enough? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want your teeth kicked in, you better listen to Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And fellas, it certainly is great being here at Swamp. I mean, Camp A Day. <laughs> yes, sir. It's really. Hey, Mr. Benny, can I go now? Certainly you can go. We don't force anybody to listen to this program. If you want to hear it, we're happy. If you don't want to hear it, it's up to you. Don, untie him. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. <laughs> There you are. You can go now. (laughs) Take the anchor off my foot, too. (laughs) Oh, get out of here. Hmm. Who was that guy, Jack? I don't know. He told me he was a talking horse, so I thought it'd be a novelty on the program. (laughs) Anyway, Don, now that he's gone, these boys have waited long enough to be entertained. So let's start out with that joke I wrote. Oh, you mean the one about the soldier on leave? Yeah, this will kill them. I mean, it's made to order for these guys, you know? (laughs) Oh, really? They they love it. Okay, here goes. Say, Don, what's the difference between a soldier on leave and a flea on a cat's stomach? I don't know, Jack. What is the difference between a soldier on leave and a flea on a cat's stomach? One's on furlough and the other's on low fur. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Benny, if you were any sharper, you'd cut yourself. (laughs) Great gag, isn't it, Don? It certainly is, Jack. Yeah, it's a shame to tell that clever stuff so early in the program. (laughs) But we might as well start off with a bang. It helps the... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. Say, Jack. What? As I walked in, I saw a fella come out of here, and he looked like he lost an argument with a Sherman tank. Oh, that was some wise guy, a Mr. Fitch or somebody, interrupted the start of the program. So Don beat him up. Don beat him up? Yeah. I thought I'd never get to tell that gag about the furlough and the low fur. Jack, did you tell that joke here? Yes, why? Don beat up the wrong guy. (laughs) What are you talking about? When I pull that gag, these boys screamed at it. I know, Jack, but when they pull their hair out at the same time, that's not good. (laughs) Well, maybe you're right. Anyway, if you want to know something, I was tricked into telling that furlough joke. I didn't even write it. Then where'd you get it? I have a lend-lease agreement with Fred Allen. (laughs) Imagine him sending me a lousy gag like that after the gem I sent him. Gem? Yeah, listen to this, Don. Here's the one I sent Allen. Allen says to Jimmy Wallington... Say, Jimmy. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, why does a corporal have such a tough time in the army? And Jimmy says, I don't know, Fred. Then Alan says, a corporal has such a tough time in the army. Oh, 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 because he already has two stripes against him. <laughs> uh, listen to the audience razzing Alan. <laughs> it serves him right. Jack, let me get this straight. You told Alan's joke here on the West Coast, and Alan is going to tell your joke on the East Coast? Yeah, what about it? I'd hate to be in Kansas City, trapped in the middle. (laughs) Mary, if you don't appreciate good comedy, then there's no use of... 
Come in. Hello, Mr. Benny. Here I am again. Look, we untied you, so you... Say, what are you doing in that uniform? I just enlisted in the Army. You did? Yeah, if you're a civilian, I want to be on the other side. <laughs> Goodbye. What a smart... I bet he won't last in the Army two hours. Well, I hope he isn't the guy that's going to drive us back in that Jeep tonight. Now, are we going back in one of those things? Yeah, why? Well, that's the way they brought me here. <laughs> I was sitting in the back seat, and every time we hit a bump... Oh, brother. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, oh, brother? Don, for years, the slogan was, the Army travels on its stomach. And then somebody invented the jeep. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going back in the jeep, I better have Rochester bring my overcoat. I'll call my hotel. He must be in my room packing, I think. Hello, Hotel Benton. <laughs> Operator, this is Jack Benny. Uh, give me my room. Very well. Shall I wrap it up or will you eat in here? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry. I used to be a waitress at the Brass Duck. Oh, well, get me my room. It's 425. Yes, sir. I like working at the Brass Duck, but I got fired for dancing with a customer. That's too bad. Now, will you please get me my we room? We were jitterbugging, and boy, can he jitterbug. Miss, miss, all I want is my room. Now, will you please get it for me? It's four... Bad enough, I got fired, but the boss accused me of stealing. Look, look, miss. Was it my fault if my foot got stuck in a cuspidor? <laughs> now, wait a minute. I don't care anything about your job at the brass duck. All I want hey, you is... you sound like the guy I dance with. What did you do with my lipstick? <laughs> You got the wrong party. Oh, well, and I'm sorry I bothered you. Goodbye. Miss, miss, hello, hello. How do you like that? She hung up. Oh, well, I'll call later. by the orchestra. And now, fellas... Hey, hey, wait a minute, Jackson. Don't give me no brush off. Tell them who's orchestra. <laughs> what? Well, let me have a little billing. Tell these soldier here's who band that is. Phil, I don't have to tell them. When they see 18 men wearing overalls, no shoes, <laughs> and fatigued faces, they know whose band it is, believe me. Well, I don't care about the band. I'm talking about me. You didn't give me no introduction. Introduction? Yeah, me, Phil Harris, the kid with a million-dollar personality. Huh? <laughs> and 175 pounds of glamour. Well, I'm sorry I didn't introduce you, Phil. No wonder I got an inferiority complex. <laughs> inferiority complex? You're about as shy as a hand grenade. And not only... Oh, uh, Jack, why don't you leave Phil alone? It isn't his fault that he's better looking than you are. Who said he was better looking than I am? I did. <laughs> you did? Phil, do you mean to say that you go around telling people you're better looking than me? No, I don't make no personal issue out of it. I just say I'm better looking than anybody. <laughs> well, now I've heard everything. You know, Phil, you amaze me. You're the only fellow I ever met that always talks about himself. Just once in a while, Phil. Once in a while, it's nice to talk about the other fellow. <laughs> Get the idea? Yeah, I think I do, Jackson, and I think you're right. Come on, let's try it. Now, I meet you on the street and you greet me. Okay. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Jackson. Did you have a good breakfast this morning? Yes, Phil, I had a wonderful breakfast this morning. Well, I'm still better looking than you are. <laughs> Well, 
There's no use explaining anything to you. Say, Jack. What? Forget about Phil. If we're going back in that Jeep, you better try and get Rochester again. Oh, yes. I want him to bring my overcoat. Mary, you get the number. I don't want to get in another fight with that telephone operator. Okay. Drives me nuts anyway. <laughs> Silly thing. Hotel Benton. Will you, will you get me room 425, please? <laughs> yes, ma'am, and you can tell Mr. Benny he's a coward. Here, Jack, she's ringing your room. Okay, I'll take it. Hello? <laughs> Hello, temporary headquarters of Mr. Benny. Screen, radio, and television, whether it's listening or looking, he's open for booking. <laughs> Rochester, this is Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, oh! Hello, boy! <laughs> now, Rochester, they're taking us back in a Jeep, and I don't want to catch cold. So will you bring my... But, boss, I saw you put it on when you left this morning. My coat? Oh, I thought you wanted your hair. <laughs> I wanted my coat. It'll be cold. Then you better take your hair, too. It's got earmuffs. <laughs> Only when I part it in the middle. Now bring my coat... <laughs> bring... <laughs> now bring my coat over here right away. But, boss, I got a date. Besides, you promised me I could have this Sunday off. Sunday off, Sunday off. Look at these soldiers here. They work every day in the week. Yeah, but look at the dough they're getting. <laughs> getting much more than you are. <laughs> but if you want our household run on a military basis, it's all right with me. It's part military now. <laughs> Rochester, you're just making that up. Not the military part. Remember when we were home and you locked me in the guardhouse for 10 days? Yes. <laughs> what are you laughing at? If you didn't have to come in there every morning to wash up, I'd have never got out. <laughs> never mind that and bring my overcoat here right away. Okay, General. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, that Rochester. Tell you, if he wasn't a private, I'd demote him. And now, in keeping with the spirit of the day, the boys have has selected one soldier to represent them on our program. And he's going to sing a song for us. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Private First Class Luther Balliet of the 276th Infantry. <laughs> uh, what's the number going to be, Luther? I'm going to sing, It's a Lovely Way to Spend an Evening. Not in Corvallis. It'll go right ahead, anyway. Go right ahead. And 
spend an evening sung by private first class Luther Balliet. And very good, Luther. It was a great pleasure having you with us. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And I want to tell you something, Luther. You're in a great outfit and a great branch of the service. The good old infantry. <laughs> if I was a year or two younger, the infantry is the branch of the service I'd like to be in. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, uh, yeah? Tell them what happened when they let you go marching yesterday. Well... Go on, Jack. Tell Luther. Oh, Mary, he's not interested. Well, then I'll tell him. Mary, will you please... <laughs> Listen, Luther, Jack wanted to show how rugged he was, so he asked the sergeant if he could march with the soldiers. Mary, now, will you please... We all went along because we wanted to see how Jack could take it. We were out with for about a half an hour and... Life. Nothing like a good hike. Yeah, we must have gone about six miles and I don't even feel tired. How about you, Jack? Oh, I feel fine, except that my shoes are beginning to bother me. <laughs> really? Yeah, I wonder where I left them. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Jack, I didn't even notice you weren't wearing shoes. When did you take them off? When the Zodgers fell and sent out an SOS. <laughs> I didn't take my shoes off. They just dropped behind. Uh, here they come now. Halt! Here. <laughs> Help, me. Help me out with them, Rochester. Okay. Hey, you. Benny. Yes, sir? Why don't you keep up with the company? This is the third time we've had to come back for you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I... I got a little tired. Well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't have tried to march with these young men. Wait a minute. Are you insinuating that I'm old? That's what he said! That's what the man said! He said that! <laughs> Rochester, stop helping him. All right, let's get going. All right! About time. Come on, Mary. Let's find a soft spot to sit down. Okay. Here's the place. Ah. Oh, boy, this feels good. All right, everybody. Up on your feet, man. <laughs> what? A red hatch. Ah. Hatch. 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 <laughs> Forward hatch. Hey, wait a minute. Give me a chance to get my breath. Will you? I'll run ahead and stop them. Oh, let them go. We can find our way back to camp. Oh, Jack, let's not turn back. This is fun. Fun? Certainly, yeah. Jack. We ought to keep hiking a little more. Walking is good for the figure. It is not good for the figure. It is, too. Oh, yeah? Well, there are 10 million soldiers in the American Army who go out on 20-mile hikes every week, and not one of them looks like Lana Turner. <laughs> Now, let's get back, will you? Come on, follow me, will you, fellas? We should have stuck with the soldiers, Jack. Now we're lost. Yeah, I wonder where that trail is. We're either in the jungle or in the middle of Corvallis here. I... <laughs> let's, let's try this direction. That ought to take us somewhere. Roll them out, brother, you faded. <laughs> Rochester! 
Rochester, get up. That's a rattlesnake. <laughs> Rochester, I told you that's a rattlesnake. So what? His money's as good as anybody. <laughs> Stop acting so silly. It'll be dark soon, and we won't oh, be... Oh, look, Jack. There's a soldier over there in that clearing. Oh, yeah. Hey, soldier. Soldier. Yes, sir? How do we get to Camp Adair? Just take that trail to the left. Thanks. Come on, gang. Hey, everybody. Come over here and take a look at this sign. Sign? What does it say? I don't know, but I think it's in English. Here it is. It says infiltration course. What does that mean? Huh? What does that mean, Jack? I don't know. I guess it's army talk for shortcut. <laughs> Let's go through it. Follow me, kids. Follow me. Hey, those are bullets. Yeah, are we being shot at? I don't know, boss. Let's lie down until we talk it over. <laughs> I wonder who... The... Down, everybody, down! Flat on your stomach! Wilson, lie down! I am lying down! <laughs> well, I'm stand up. You make less of a target that way. <laughs> Say, this must be the course where they train the soldier with live ammunition. Rochester, stand up and see where they're firing from. <laughs> I ain't that curious! <laughs> I'll stand up and let him see me. They saw you. I better stand up and let him see me. <laughs> they see you. They see you, Mary. Hey, look, they're waving at us. Hey, hey, they, there go the soldiers we started out with. They're on their way back to camp. Come on, let's join them. Come on, gang. Follow me. Jack Benny Show is rebroadcast especially for you soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen of the United Nations. Now we turn the remainder of the program over to the Benny Bandmaster, Phil Harris. Music, Phil. <laughs> Jack, man alive. It starts with the bugler blowing reveille over your bed when you arrive. Jack, that's the G.I. Jack. Rootledy toot, jump in your suit, make a salute. Boot, then you wash and dress, more or less. You go get your breakfast at a beautiful little cafe they call the mess. Jack, when you convalesce, out of your seat, into the street, make with the feet, greet. Now, if you're a PFC, your duty is to salute a L-I-E-U-T. But if you brush the L-I-E-U-T, the M-P makes you K-P on the Q-T. This is the G-I Jive Man Alive. They give you a private bank that features a little device called Fluid Drive. Jack after you revive. Chunk all your junk back in your trunk. Fall on your bunk. A clunk. Man alive, they give you a private tank that features a little device called Fluid Drive. Jack, if you survive, 
shunk all your junk back in your trunk. Fall on your bunk, clunk. Soon you're counting jeeps, but before you count too fast, you'll be right back digging that GI Armed Forces Radio Service.